Two very different pictures of Australia's detention centre on Nauru have emerged today after the visit of two senior politicians. Australia's Foreign Minister Julie Bishop has defended conditions after her visit there as part of a three-day bipartisan tour of the Pacific. Our Canberra correspondent Karen Barlow joins us now. Karen, let's start with the view of the Green Senator Sarah Hansen-Young, who has also toured Nauru. What has she had to say? Well, Sarah Hansen-Young says the conditions on Nauru are heart-wrenching. Sarah Hansen-Young has just spent four days on Nauru, including one day with the single male adult asylum seekers and one day with the family groups. She says she's particularly concerned about the more than 100 children living on the island and detained in the regional processing centre. She says that this place is no place for children. She says they have no toys and very little to do. It really struck me on the way home when I was reflecting on, on the visit that I'm going to spend the weekend buying Christmas presents for my daughter. Um, these kids have nothing, absolutely nothing. And they just kept pleading with me the entire time. Um, why are we in this prison and what have we done wrong? A very emotional report back, uh, Karen. Uh, Julie Bishop, though, the Foreign Affairs Minister, the re recently appointed a Foreign Affairs Minister on her first trip to the Pacific, painted a very different picture. Yeah, Julie Bishop has been on a three-day, three-nation tour of the Pacific with the Deputy Opposition Leader, Tanya Plibersek. And uh, she spent much of yesterday at Nauru, and part of that was touring the Regional Processing Centre. Now, she admits that she didn't speak to asylum seekers and certainly didn't see any children there, but she spoke to the uh, service providers, and that's people that are part of Group Safe from Save the Children and from the welfare group, the Salvation Army. Now, she says that, uh, that uh, she was told that the children receive schooling and that she is well aware that the Australian government is providing money for re uh, recreational facilities. Now, uh, she also spoke about the, uh, the, the wider asylum seeker population, that's more than 700 people being detained there, and she says by Nauruan standards they're living in very good conditions. Well, they were certainly better than mining camps in Australia and the standard of uh, medical care and services I thought was very high. We met with a number of the doctors and talked to them in detail about the services that they're providing. Uh, they themselves described the services as comparable to those that would be received in a significant regional centre in Australia. Karen, what about the rest of the trip, uh, given also that uh, there are serious cutbacks in aid on the drawing board for the new government? Yeah, this, uh, this trip to the Pacific, it's been a bipartisan one, as I mentioned, and it also has been a first outing for the new Ambassador for Women and Girls, Natasha Stott Despoja. So there's been a big focus on women and girls. But there is concern about the Australian aid budget. Now, you've got to remember this is not being regarded as cuts to the aid budget, but there will be a forecast reduction in growth to the Australian aid budget. Pacific Island nations and uh, aid groups have been concerned. Now, uh, we have heard from the uh, the foreign minister in this regard today, not generally about where the cuts are, but she says that the foreign aid budget will be more efficient and more effective in the future. So we'll find out more details in the May budget. But announced today, uh, Vanuatu is to get an extra $48 million over three years, and that's to support its economy. And that will go towards things like improving and maintaining rural roads and supporting women in jobs, uh, very big growth jobs for Vanuatu, like jobs in tourism.